to invite uh, our next uh, keynote, Michael Moore, um, who is a, a, an amazing visionary as well. He has been in this uh, space for more than 20 plus years, uh, way before anybody started tracking this, this whole category from a Wall Street standpoint. Uh, he has a, a Midas touch. Uh, whatever he touches turns into gold. Uh, he has been uh, a visionary more from the Wall Street side of finding the best winners, the best companies that has the, the highest, uh, is likely to have the highest impact uh, in our entire category. So I really look up to Michael and his wisdom and his uh, how he looks at the market. I think we can all benefit from an investor uh, point of view. Um, his, his successes, I won't uh, roll it out, but you definitely look it up. Uh, he is the founder of GSV. Uh, which is one of the top uh, investment um, uh, venture capital as well as private equity fund. And he's also launched a, a major uh, operating company through a SPAC model as well. So, uh, Michael, uh, uh, over to you. And thank you again for coming. And Carl, th thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's, it's truly a privilege to have the opportunity to share some perspectives with this, uh, with this group. So um, in, in terms of the, the talk today, we call it the future work BC to AD, and I'll get into the BC to AD in a second. But 25 years ago, I wrote a white paper, uh, a Wall Street white paper called The Dawn of the Age of Knowledge. And in that white paper, forecast the emergence of the knowledge economy, how the internet was gonna change everything, and how education was really gonna be at the center of the knowledge economy. Because in a global marketplace and a knowledge-based economy, what you knew, your education, made the difference not only for individual, but for a company, and for that matter, a country. So you fast forward the clock 25 years today, you look at the five largest market cap companies in the world, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook. These are all knowledge-based businesses. They compete on their ability to track the best talent, develop that talent, and retain that talent. And you look, since we wrote that white paper 25 years ago, Microsoft's market value is up 22X, Apple's up 800 times, Amazon's up 4,000 times, and Google and Facebook didn't exist 25 years ago. And so the value creation in that period of time is pretty stunning. I'm um, looking at, from a, a market size standpoint, uh, education has grown to a $7.5 trillion market globally expected to be a $10 trillion market by 2026. To give you context, that's nearly 10% of global GDP. And when you look at the digital learning component of the education market, in 2019, it was $160 billion. That's about 2% of that overall $7 trillion spend. And what we had forecast uh, before coronavirus BC, that it was gonna be a trillion dollar market by 2034, which is pretty significant growth. But nonetheless, when you're looking at a $7 trillion category, just 2% of the overall uh, market uh, representation today, maybe not quite what we thought it could have been back when we made that forecast. We weren't alone. John Chambers, the former CEO of Cisco, said education over the internet is going to be so big, it's going to make email look like a rounding error. And obviously, you know, it's been significant, but hasn't made email look like a rounding error why is that? Well, in 2000, when that comment was made, there was just 360 million people on the internet. There was no such thing as an app store. There was no such thing as a smartphone. Computing power was weak. Storage cost was expensive. And teachers weren't digital natives. And the hours to upload a video, you know, YouTube, you know, still was, was five years from being born. So you look today, that's obviously changed quite a bit. You had 5 billion people on the internet. You got 500 billion app downloads. A lot of entrepreneurs to go from the idea to reaching tens of millions of customer students at, at, at stunning speeds, computing power is up, um, significant storage cost is down, 60% of teachers are digital natives today, and 500 hours of videos are uploaded, uploaded every single minute. So what happened in um, March of 2020 was a, a game-changing event. Obviously, you know, coronavirus from a societal standpoint, devastating, and you know, we're still living with the significance from the digital learning perspective, you had 1.6 billion students that were instantly put online. So uh, what does that mean? That essentially means that 20% of the world's population was thrown in the deep end of the online learning pool and told to sink or swim. Some sank, some crawled to the edge of the pool, got out and said, they're never going back in. Many flailed around a little bit, got the hang of it, 
And, you know, you're never going back the way things were. You know, the genie's out of the bottle. Digital learning's gone through a permanent major acceleration. So we think this catalyst is so dig significant. We say that there was BC before Croner, there's now AD after the disease, and we've entered the age of the dawn of the age of digital learning. So BC was about physical and linear, about 18 to 22 year olds. Um, AD is really um, about exponential growth and lifelong learning. So the future has accelerated to the present. What does that mean from a market standpoint? Basically, you had the $1 trillion market that we expected in 15 years to be at $1 trillion market in eight years. So the time, the time frame is compressed in half. So over $800 billion of market opportunity is being created here over the next seven years. How that's reflected in stock prices, the market is a forecaster of, of, of future. You know, Chegg's up 155% since March of 2020. Pearl set up 133% before it was sold uh, to you, up 150%. Docebo up 667%. Duolingo, which went public recently, up 293% from its private value to the IPO. Coursera up 61%. So you've had significant change in terms of market valuation of, of that. In terms of tech, ed tech unicorns, in March of 2020, there was 18 of them. Today, there's 36 of them. So it's doubled in the past eight months. And look at EdTech VC funding. Again, what's, what's, what's important about capital is it typically flows. You know, it's pretty fungible. It flows to where opportunities are being created. In 2020, there's $600 million of EdTech VC funding. By the way, that was a record by far in that year. Over the to 2019 or 2020, you've seen it grow to 13.8 billion, a 37% CAGR. It had an acceleration last year. And year to date, you know, you've seen it, you know, with nine months in, into it, you've seen that trend continue. So substantial amount of capital flowing because this is where opportunities being created. Again, Carl mentioned from a Wall Street perspective, the tip, the best, the typical investment opportunities where there's a problem. The bigger the opportunity, the greater the, you know, the, the, the bigger the, the problem, the greater the opportunity. I mean, there is no greater problem or opportunity in, in, in our estimation than how we more effectively educate our populace so they can participate in the future. So looking at EdTech IPO funding, it's grown at 29% to $3.1 billion year to date. Coursera recently went public, raised over $500 million. Duolingo raised over $500 million. There's something significant is going on here. Look at the EdTech public market cap, you know, 200 in 2010 was 80 billion, more than double, almost tripled in 2021 to 20, 220 billion. To give context to that, as I mentioned earlier, global learning is uh, nearly 10% of global GDP. So $84 trillion global GDP, global learning is 9% of that. In terms of market cap, it's just 0.2%. So the catch up opportunity, even though we've seen all this growth, you know, the best is yet to come for sure, particularly when you look at the Trends that Josh Burson was saying before, and the things that we're seeing in the marketplace, you know, the, the, the entrepreneurs and companies that fill this gap with innovative products like EdCast have tremendous tailwinds uh, for, for, for market value opportunity. And just to put a comparison to this, we often made a comparison between education and healthcare. Healthcare, which is about the same size globally in terms of spend as education, 9% of global GDP in healthcare has 6% of global market cap. So if you go from 0.2 to 6%, you can see, see what can happen here uh, quickly. As we try to look ahead, and, and, and Carl, Carl was kind to, to reference the fact that we've been involved in a number of game-changing businesses, both in the digital learning space and outside of the digital learning space, but how we think about that and how we look at a, get a, a window to the future is we try to connect the dots because it's we're connecting these dots and understand where these patterns are being uh, created is really how we position ourselves for the future opportunities. And so here um, is a comment by Bob Dylan. Some people fill the rain, others just get wet. And so what we're trying to do with connecting dots and understand what these dots are is really feeling the rain. So here's some of the dots that we're seeing. 5G, a game changer, obviously 20 times to 100 times faster internet speed allows all sorts of capabilities to occur over the net in terms of engaging Hollywood meets Harvard type of experience. 60% of college students are women. So if you want to understand the future of knowledge economy, look who's getting the knowledge or getting the education. So who's going to be basically running the world? Storage costs down 99% effectively free. Climate change, when you look at issues facing society, 
you know, one is definitely how to more educate, how, how to educate our populace so they can participate in the future because fewer and fewer people have that opportunity. The second major opportunity or, or, or problem to solve is climate change. Those are probably the two most important uh, uh, issues facing the future of civilization. Mission Corporation, I wrote a book this spring called The Mission Corporation. What that really talks about is the great businesses of tomorrow are to combine the, the ambition of a for-profit with the heart of a not-for-profit, combining purpose with profits, because that's where the talent's gonna wanna be in terms of where they wanna work. That's where the cust customers wanna buy from. That's what, you know, that's what the society is gonna support. There's 5 billion internet users today. MENA equals the you know, World Hub. So you can reach two thirds of the world's population on an eight hour flight from Dubai. And just think about that, particularly where demographics and growth is being created for the future. There's now 300 million Zoom users. Pre-pandemic, March of 2020, there was 10 million. Zoom increasingly is becoming the platform for communication. ESG is a major investment theme. B chips, Vietnam, China, Indiana, India, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore as a, as a, as a geographic megatrend. Sustainability, it's no longer can you, you know, do you grow or are you green? You got to do both. 500 billion apps were downloaded. So an entrepreneur can reach tens of millions of students like this. Skills, and, and Josh made the point about skills has always been important, but this is definitely a dot where you need to complement other ways that people get, gain knowledge, such as degrees and other ways. 6.3 billion smartphones, AR and VR. We're seeing incredible learning activity and, and interesting ideas being created. Our partner at Arizona State has got a partnership with a company called Dreamscape doing amazing things in terms of immersive learning with VR and how new labs are being developed. Computing power up 400% just in the last 10 years. The Global Silicon Valley, our firm is named GSV for the Global Silicon Valley. We named this 10 years ago. And this is this idea that Silicon Valley you know, has been this amazing game-changing place where incredible businesses have been created. But the mindset of Silicon Valley and of, of, of entrepreneurship and innovation that's made Silicon Valley such an incredible place is spreading throughout the world. Innovation is booming, you know, in this emerging global Silicon Valley. I like to say from Austin to Boston, from Chicago to Sao Paulo, from Mumbai to Shanghai to Dubai. Five of the 10 fastest growing countries in the world last year were in Africa. Artificial intelligence obviously is changing everything, embedded in everything. 3.4 billion gamers worldwide. So nearly half the world's population plays games. Autonomous everything. Obviously, the name of this, the big focus of this, uh, this conference is about autonomous, everything, how, how learning is embedded really in workflow and how that's going to be absolutely the future of, of work. Peer-to-peer, -peer, how people best learn things is sharing knowledge with others, teaching other people, and communities around learning is a big idea and an important way that people are going to acquire knowledge and where big opportunities are going to be created. Impact is another theme that people are looking to have you know, which is related to Mission Corp and other things. Weapons of mass instruction is another dot. These rapidly growing, scalable network effects type of business that create the, you know, greater value and at lower cost is another thing that, that we see as a, as a dot out there. $165 million spent every single day on games. 773 million illiterates worldwide. People spend 20, that on TikTok, spend 24 hours a month uh, on, on the platform. English as the world language. Increasingly, that's you know on the internet and business, English is the world language. By the way, if you speak three languages, you're trilingual. If you speak two languages, languages, you're bilingual. If you speak one language, you're American. Seven percent of the world is knowledge workers, which other in other words, what that says is only seven percent of the adults around the world have a college degree, yet most of the jobs being created require some form of college. 41% of Africans are under the age of 15, you know, in terms of demographics. The number of college students is going to double from, by 2030. So there's 207 million college students in the world today. It's going to be 414 million by 2030. Broken China, from an education standpoint, it used to be the most innovative, important market in the world, obviously upside down. Homework, the idea of home, working from home, and that's been obviously a, is a trend that's accelerated dramatically. During this gig economy, you know, 85 million uh, part or hourly workers just in the United States alone. 
weapons of mass destruction. I talked about English fluent speakers in India. I mean, English, just showing the importance of English um, in, in India, if you're fluent in English, you make 320% more just by having that skill alone. There's 2 billion English speakers now in the world. Master's degree, you make four times more than a high school employee. 54% of the workforce needs to be reskilled in the next five years. Of train, train, and pain is a dot that obviously we know the best companies in the world, that's what they have to be exceptional at. So here's a bunch of dots and there's more. But what we're trying to do in terms of patterns, in terms of predicting the future and getting a window to the future, we're connecting these dots. And from these dots, we create themes as we're going to talk about in a second. But before I do that, not only do you need to connect the dots, but you also need to think differently and think outside the box. So I'm going to do a little exercise that we're all going to participate in. So what I'd like you to do is take a, a, a piece of paper in front of you. I know paper is increasingly obsolete, but get a piece of paper, take a pen. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect these dots without lifting your pen off of the paper. I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to accomplish this. So you got to connect all these dots without, without, uh, with, without uh, um, lifting your pen. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I know some of you are getting frustrated by now. I'll give you another few seconds and then I'll help you. So here's how it, we do it. You go from the bottom right corner, go up to the top left corner, and then we go straight down, but not stopping at the, the bottom dot. We go through the bottom dot, then we go over, and then go over the top. And that's how we do it. And the point being, thinking within the constraints of what you see is often how you're going to, you're not going to see where the opportunities are really being created. So just to close things up, I'm going to talk about some investment education themes that we are, think are critical for the future of work and what um, I'd like you to, to, to leave you with. The first is not a new theme. Everybody's aware of lifelong learning. You know, the old system, you, you played from zero to five, you learn from five to 25, you got a job from 25 to 65, then you retired. The new system, you're gonna learn from the time you're born to the time you retire. If you ever retire, you're gonna to continually need to be learning. So no longer do you fill up your knowledge, knowledge tank at age 25 and drive off through life. You're gonna continually need to be learning things. So if I were asking you if you're physically fit and you said, oh yeah, I ran a marathon 20 years ago, you'd say, well, that was, that's absurd if you haven't done anything since. Well, in the knowledge economy, if you're not on learning on an ongoing basis, it's gonna be equally absurd. A second theme, knowledge is a currency. So no longer it's just the degree because the ticket to opportunity that's gonna be augmented by other ways people are able to represent their knowledge or capabilities, what they're able to do, which complementary. Obviously, Jamie Dimon's made the point, the future work of skills, so stop worrying about degrees. Again, that's a theme that we, of course, uh, believe in wholeheartedly. Knowledge portfolio, how you represent, just like your financial portfolio, how you represent what you know, your capabilities, what your opportunities should be, is gonna be represented in a variety of ways, including formal degrees and certificates and a variety of things that, that, that show you how, you know, what, what, what you're actually capable of. Obviously, EdCast is uh, doing incredible things in that, in that area. Hollywood meets Harvard. This is the idea that you can't learn anything if you're not engaged. What Hollywood does an amazing job with is telling, is telling stories, creating stars of actors, having low cost but high quality production through scale. Masterclass and Outlier are two companies we invest in that represent this. Invisible learning. This is the idea that you're learning things without even recognizing you're doing. You're doing things that you naturally want to do, that you're engaged. Games is a tremendous example of this. I mentioned there's already 3.4 billion gamers in the world. XR, the combination of VR and, and augmented reality, being able to do really immersive learning. We've been talking about this for you know, forever. We're finally there. We were starting to see it happen in the real world. News to knowledge, how you're acquiring this knowledge is this continuum, is, is, is another theme. This idea that short form education might be an article you read, you know, you listen to a, a, a podcast that's a different form, a little bit longer form of knowledge you're acquiring, a documentary, a conference like this, going, you know, going to a class without getting a degree, a degree, a graduate degree. This is this continuum. I'm wrapping up. I promise you, I've got a few more themes, but we're, we're getting there. RoboEd is the idea of artificial intelligence being integrated in the learning process. You know, we talk about um, how, how we create personalized learning, every single click getting more. Uh, personalized to me, you know, advance me where I'm, where I'm, where I'm, uh, uh, where, where I have the right uh, knowledge, going, going back where I don't, all this in a, in a, in a way that's, you know, uh, getting smarter and smarter with every single click. If you have three bad teachers in a row, you know, you basically statistically did. 
Higher ed is another key concept that you're seeing happen in a very real way. Historically, the silos between higher education and, and work, increasingly they're integrated, you're learning to earn. Education is a benefit, major theme. 30 years ago, healthcare was a benefit that was critical to obtain and train and retain, you know, obtain and retain the best talent. Increasingly, you're seeing education being integrated as a core way that the top companies are able to attract, retain, and develop people. Embedded autonomous learning, just like you're seeing in the game-changing businesses outside of learning, like Snowflake, like UiPath, like ServiceNow. And learning, this integration, this embedded learning on an autonomous basis of how people learn on a real-time basis, you know, critical, mission critical for, for their jobs. That's a mega trend that, that's ex extremely exciting. Vertical knowledge stack, this idea that you're creating learning, not just in these segments, corporate learning or higher ed or K-12, or it's really this up and down way that people are going to be learning on an ongoing basis. And the companies that, that are able to address this and get a tremendous opportunity. Two more themes, no, three more themes, peer to peer. Um, this is the idea, the best way you learn is sharing knowledge with others. Community learning is something that you know, really haven't seen enough of, but we believe strongly that that's going to be part of the future of work and how people acquire knowledge in a seamless way. Education is an export. This is the, you know, historically startups used to look at a local market, then a regional market, then a national market, then a, if they're really successful, go global. The best companies today are looking at global day one. India is a great example of this. India is exporting education as a, as a, as a, as a product. We've seen very exciting companies out of India. And the last theme of a mention is mind, body, and soul. Uh, and, and, and Josh Burson kind of referenced this in, in so, uh, to, to, to a degree. The pandemic has been incredibly difficult from a mental health standpoint for many, many people. And that was just an accelerator of a trend that we've already seen social media has caused some of this. But the idea of how people participate in the future, how they live their fullest, richest lives is learning how to uh, have better mental health how they treat their, their wellness and their spirituality and other things all integrated into being the most productive self, how they can really uh, live their fullest life. And we think, again, that's a major theme, both of the future of work and the future of society. So again, with that, I cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. But um, again, this is a, it's a privilege for me to have the opportunity to speak to this incredible group. Carl, thank you so much. And again, uh, very excited about what you're doing. Wow. Michael, that was amazing. So thank you so much. Oh my God, you covered like almost like the God's view of everything that's happening on planet Earth. And uh, I think between you and Josh Burson, I feel like just in the last 40 minutes, my IQ has gone up by 10 notches. <laughs> so, thank you so much. And folks, um, look, it's because of, you know, Michael and Josh who evangelizes the, what's happening in our category that we are bringing, we are getting fuel or funding to do all this innovation in our entire ecosystem. So if you are a practitioner in a global 2000 company and you want more funding from your CFO, just call Michael to talk to your CFO. <laughs> and just like absolutely, he is bringing absolutely. cash from, just like he's bringing cash from Wall Street to fund all the innovation, innovation, he can bring funding from your CFO to fund innovations and bring this technology adoption inside your organization. So thank you again, Michael. Appreciate very much. And we'll see you soon.